Ladies and gentlemen, families and friends, a very warm welcome indeed to Rochester Cathedral and to this degree ceremony of the University of Kent. The ceremony will start soon and it begins with four processions, the graduands, the academic staff, the honorary graduand and the chancellor. We'll all stand for the last procession and I'll give you a signal so you know when to do that. While this is an exciting occasion, we ask that you please remember all those seated around you and particularly not to block their view. Standing up or leaving your seat to take photos and videos will not be tolerated. Ushers in the blue gowns are stationed around the cathedral should you need help. Guests will not be allowed to leave the cathedral from 15 minutes before the end of the ceremony and the center aisle must remain clear at all times for processions of graduates and staff. At the end of the ceremony, the head usher will ask you to stand for the processions. You will then take your seats as they prepare for you to exit the cathedral. Please remain seated until you are instructed to leave by an usher. Lastly, please make sure that your phones are now switched off. Once more, please be mindful of those around you who also want to celebrate this very special day. Thank you so much, everyone, and have a truly fantastic time.
Distinguished guests, our honorary graduand, colleagues, and especially our graduates, I declare this degree congregation open. Please be seated. Today, we are awarding degrees, certificates, and diplomas for those who have completed academic courses at the University of Kent. I want to thank the Dean for allowing us to use this wonderful venue of Rochester Cathedral. And as Chancellor, I want to welcome every one of you who's able to be part of our celebrations here today and also those watching online. You all showed extraordinary resilience and commitment to complete your studies, and we are very proud of how you rose to those challenges and overcame them. You've made it. I want to thank all the family members, friends, and other supporters who are here, as well as those who are not. All of you will have provided support in so many ways for our graduates, for which you too deserve our thanks and our congratulations. I'd also like to thank those members of the university staff who have supported you throughout your studies and in your broader life at the university. Many of them are here on the platform or volunteering in the cathedral, but there are countless others who've also contributed to your success today. It is our community, our family, the staff and students together that make the University of Kent such a successful institution. Graduates, I'm proud to see you here today. Your proof, if any proof were needed, that Kent students are truly extraordinary. Being here today means you have excelled academically, but you've also gained the knowledge, skills, and understanding to enable you to move on to the next stage of your life. We live in changing and challenging times, but on this day, my greatest hope and belief is that Kent has given you, our graduates, everything you need to embrace change, not just your certificate and qualifications, but more importantly, the knowledge, values, confidence, and determination to meet every challenge. Of course, it helps to have great teachers, and we have some of the world's leading academics among our staff with a passion for passing on their knowledge and research skills to their students. Our researchers make a difference in the world, working across disciplines to tackle some of the world's great challenges, whether big or small. They will have made sure you were up to date with the latest ideas, the cutting edge thinking that inspired, and I hope that challenged you too. That work continues, I'm proud to say. At Kent, we stand for ambition. It inspires collaboration, creates connections, and it unites communities. We're here to make a difference, to transform lives, whether through an education and student experience that fires your imagination so that you can make your own mark on the world, or through outstanding research that changes the way we look at things, or through working with local communities to bring about positive change. So, graduates, I hope you're as proud of this university as we are of you. I hope you enjoy the ceremony and afterwards go on to celebrate your success with your family and friends. Enjoy your rite of passage as you cross the stage because this is your moment to shine. Please feel free to clap, to cheer, to be joyous. It is, after all, a celebration. By admitting you to your degree, it is our honor and pleasure to mark your success and to wish you well on your future path, wherever it may take you. Thank you. <laughs>
different candidates for their awards and degrees. Most Honourable Chancellor, to you and to the whole University, I present these candidates from the Division of Arts and Humanities found worthy to be admitted to degrees. By virtue of the authority committed to me, I admit all those who are about to be presented and other qualified candidates in absentia. For the degree of Bachelor of Arts with Honours, Isaac Adesaye Oumamuli Ebuwa. Edawumi. <laughs> Chantelle Amishon. <laughs> Borna Ball. <laughs> Dominic Patrick Berry. Benjamin Fox. Hi, Benjamin. Ellie Hope. Nathan Francis Thomas Morton. <laughs> Esther Olivia Eniabukan Odesanmi. Oladiran Odeli Emolulu. <laughs> Emmanuel Ikakuchu Amadirin. James Jakub Paris. Joshua Thomas Paisley. <laughs> Prania Rai. <laughs> Nathan Luke Sharp. <laughs> Catherine Alex Shaw. Matthew Elliot Terry. <laughs> Emily Victoria Talman. <laughs> For the degree of Bachelor of Science with Honours, Jessica Lydia Gordon. Jesse Adawu. <laughs> Callum James Motley. <laughs> Dominic Orion Sage. Hi, Dominic. <laughs> <laughs> the following candidate has requested that they be admitted to the degree of Doctor of Philosophy in Absentia. Jan Hendricks. I now call upon the Deputy Dean of Kent Business School. Most Honourable Chancellor, to you and to the whole University, I present these candidates from Kent Business School, found worthy to be admitted to degrees. By virtue of the authority committed to me, I admit all those who are about to be presented and other qualified candidates in absentia. For the degree of Bachelor of Arts with Honours, Louise Sara Davis.
Nikki Georgiou. Kevin Hanna. Edward James Hollingdale. Heather Lily Langston. Grace Lawal. Connor Sean George McCarthy. Eliane Feza Mukendi. Laura Holly Neal. Joseph Taylor Parkin. Thomas Roche. For the degree of Bachelor of Science with Honours, Emma Rachel Ashmore. <laughs> Kaylee Sophia Bliss. <laughs> Kimberly Coral Bree. <laughs> Casey Reese Gabriel. Linan Gill. Adam James Granger. Olivia Frances Horner. For the degree of Master of Arts, Opayemi Tunde Jurajayi. <laughs> Rachel Aboral. <laughs> Emma Louise Lane. Joy Bala Nua Ozo. <laughs> Tibello <laughs> Sibanda. <laughs> For the degree of Master of Science, Juliette Edame Fedden. Amanda Claire Enna Waghorn. I now call upon the Director of Education and Student Experience for the Division of the Study of Law, Society and Social Justice. Most Honourable Chancellor, to you and to the whole University, I present these candidates from the Division of Law, Society and Social Justice, found worthy to be admitted to degrees. By virtue of the authority committed to me, I admit all those who are about to be presented and other qualified candidates in absentia. For the degree of Bachelor of Arts with Honours, Lauren Courtney Crowd. Florentina Diana Garlan. <laughs> Megan Louise Gelson. <laughs> Charlie Michael Gurr. <laughs> Holly. 
Holly Ellen Morris. Deborah Odomosu. Victory Temateo Onofade. <laughs> Megan Sarah Payton. <laughs> Nicola Aisha Pearson. <laughs> Kieran Thomas Webb. Isabel Joanne Williams. Can you read this one? Uh, I can try. Do you know how that's pronounced? Yeah. Okay. For the degree of Master of Science, Christy Jane Arul David. I now call upon the Deputy Dean of Kent Business School. Most Honourable Chancellor, to you and to the whole University, I present these candidates from Kent Business School found worthy to be admitted to degrees. By virtue of the authority committed to me, I admit all those who are about to be presented and other qualified candidates in absentia. For the degree of Bachelor of Arts with Honours, Afalabi Abayade. <laughs> Jesse Yoshi Amayo. Chidumebi Ben Nwankwo. <laughs> Melissa Kim Corner. Estelle Louise Hunter. Alexandros Simeon Kokinos Kovari. Raju Loksom. Yusuf Osama Mohammed. Samuel James Reeson. <laughs> Tiana Moshia Sadler Brown. <laughs> Shema Shailu. For the degree of Bachelor of Science with honours, Bridget Lucy Adu. <laughs> Victor Akin Mady. <laughs> Louis Ray Ola Akin Wunmi. Tolawalesi Afalabi Alabi. <laughs> Stephen Kwabena Amponsa. Omar Omar Agil Angawi. <laughs> 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 
Pranavan Baskaran. Ebu Bel Chukwu Aruma. Mark David Boswell. Lucy Jade Brideland. Alfie James Byrne. Charlie Thomas Chambers. Fai Cheng. <laughs> Chibwe Amelia Chungyu. <laughs> Gianluca Cosimo Corbo. <laughs> Rebecca Tram Dan. Maha Ala Salman Jawad Dwekat. I now call upon the public orator, Professor Dan Lloyd, to present Chichi Nwanoku for the award of an honorary degree. Most Honourable Chancellor, graduates, graduands, colleagues, families and friends. When Chichi Wanuku was growing up in Berlin, just a stone's throw from the University of Kent's Canterbury campus, she just discovered a piano while playing with a school friend at a neighbour's house. Chichi was hooked, fascinated by the sounds she could create and spending more time playing with the piano than playing with her friend. Perhaps recognizing that she was observing something special, that friend's mother wheeled the piano down the street from her own, her own house to Chi Chi's. That generosity, that kindness of her neighbor gave Chi Chi her first musical instrument. But it could have been very different because when Chi Chi was growing up, music was probably playing second fiddle. She was an exceptional, 100 meter sprinter, just missing out at 16 on selection for the 1972 Munich Olympics. Rapidly improving during her late teens, selection for Montreal four years later seemed all but guaranteed, but a knee injury playing football, just like that, ended her sprinting career. Devastated, Chichi applied the discipline and skill set she acquired as an athlete to her music. She still talks now of the parallels between the two. An attuned musical ear gave her the fastest sprint start in Britain. Honing technique with repetition was second nature. And the acute focus needed to perform in the moment suits the concert stage as much as the athletic stadium. She refocused on music and on the advice of her teachers, took up the double bass. Why, Chi Chi openly wondered, would they encourage the smallest girl in her class to take up the biggest instrument of the symphony orchestra? Take up a less popular instrument, they said, and you can shape your talent into a career. And Chi Chi has certainly done that. She's a renowned and critically acclaimed double bassist. She's performed with many leading ensembles, including 
as a founding member and principal double bass of the Orchestra of the Age of Enlightenment, a pioneering ensemble who performed repertoire on instruments and with the historically informed technique of that repertoire's era. But there have been barriers. At her first concert, as a student at the Royal Academy of Music, one of her tutors said to her parents that the double bass was a man's instrument. There's a delic delicious irony then that years later, Chi Chi became professor of double bass. Where? At the Royal Academy of Music. But as the beloved daughter of an Irish mother and Nigerian father, Chi Chi wondered why it was, even in the 21st century, that so often as a performer in professional ensembles, she was the only person of color on the concert stage. Reasoning that there must be more black and ethnically diverse musicians out there, and that the same kinds of barriers might exist for them as they did for her, Chi Chi decided to find out. It took a lot of phone calls to musical organizations, but yes, they were out there, and yes, the barriers were there too. So Chi Chi founded the Chinica Foundation in 2015 to provide outstanding career opportunities for black and ethnically diverse classical musicians in the UK and Europe. The foundation supports two orchestras, the flagship Chinica Orchestra, comprising outstanding musicians from across the continent, and the Chinica Junior Orchestra for those below the age of 22. Close connectivity and collaboration between the ensembles facilitates teaching and mentorship, with junior orchestra members now succeeding in progressing to prestigious institutions and successful musical careers. A vibrant community engagement program with diverse groups and especially young people in schools provides timely access and opportunity. And visible role models send a powerful message. In Chi Chi's words, you can be what you can see. In only eight years, the Chinica Orchestra has established an exceptional reputation for its musicianship and the passionate engagement of its audiences in sold out venues. Audiences who are diverse in age and ethnicity and often new to classical music. At its first performance in 2015 at London's South Banks Bank Centre, where it is now resident orchestra, there was a standing ovation as the orchestra took the stage before they'd even played a note. Recently, the orchestra completed multi-city tours of Europe and the United States, and it's a regular televised highlight of the annual BBC Proms. In each concert, and now it in recordings in partnership with the Decca record label, Chinica Orchestra performs works by black composers such as Samuel Coleridge Taylor and Florence Price, works that were admired by their now more recognizable peers and performed regularly at the time that they were composed. In doing so, these works and these composers reclaim their rightful place and standing in classical music alongside their more familiar repertoire, whether in live concerts or increasingly on broadcast TV and radio. So by increasing the diversity of talent in classical music, whether in composition, artistic direction or performance, Chi Chi's vision and leadership is not only providing opportunity for those underrepresented, it's enriching music for everyone. Chi Chi is now broadening and deepening this influence. She's a trustee for multiple arts organizations and is an in-demand TV and radio broadcaster in which, among other things, she has brought to life the stories of, and music of black composers and musicians. She's promoted inclusive selection and retention processes in the major orchestras so that they can succeed in reconnecting broken pipelines of talent and enhance their diversity. And among endless awards and recognition for services to music and diversity 
She was awarded a CBE in the Queen's Diamond Jubilee Honours. The hard work continues, and with the Chinica Foundation, Chi Chi has mobilized a formidable and growing movement of powerful and passionate supporters. But at its core is the aim to remove barriers for talented individuals to succeed and create a space where black and ethnically diverse musicians can walk on stage and know that they belong. Because as she has said, music of whatever kind is for all people. Most Honourable Chancellor, to you and to the whole university, I present Chi Chi Nwanaku to be admitted to the degree of Doctor of Music Honoris Causa. By virtue of the authority committed to me, I admit you to the degree of Doctor of Music Honoris Causa with great pleasure. going to work at this height? Yeah. Chancellor, distinguished guests, graduates, it's an honour to be here today and I thank you for this incredible award. Kent has a very special place in my heart, having grown up near Canterbury for the best part of my childhood. At times like this, it only enhances the experience when there is such brilliant quality music making. And I thank the Jubilate Brass and the cathedral organist, Adrian Bortry, for their utterly stunning playing. Thank you. <clears throat> Congratulations to all of you who are graduating today. I know what you've all been through to get this far, and it's great to see such pride in all your family's faces as well. I have a little note for you. I'd like to speak to you about three related things, ambition, failure, and perseverance, and how they're related. Now that you've finished uni, and you're going out into the big wide world, either in the form of further study or starting new careers, some of you will be unsure about what it is that you want to achieve in your life. Equally, some of you will know exactly what you want to be, and you will have mapped out your whole life already. Well, when I was slightly younger than you, in my last year at school, I was one of the latter types. I knew exactly what I wanted, and there was never any doubt in my mind that, that I would do it. And guess what? It wasn't being a musician. I was pre preparing to be a 100 meter sprinter, but a football injury ended that in a split second, which is why I then had to dive into music full time and learn the double bass in record speed. So regardless of how much you want something, inevitably there will be roadblocks along the way. The key is to persevere if it doesn't work out the first time. And an important part of persevering is having an interest or a passion in what you're doing. It might sound obvious, but you need to love what you do in order to, to truly succeed in it. Not only will a passion for your subject or job help you to persevere when things go wrong, but doing what you love will give you an enormous satisfaction in the long run. Remember, you might spend up to 19 years in education, but your working life will last for 40 or even 50 years or more. Who wants to spend those 40 years or so doing something that's of no interest to you? Follow your passion, do what you love, and you're more likely to succeed. If you go for an interview and you don't get it, who cares? What are you going to do about it? Try again, go to another interview, use the experience of the previous failure to give you more energy to succeed the next time. Just because your first choice didn't work out doesn't mean you've lost anything. In fact, the only scenario in which you lose anything is the one in which you give up and don't try. And that's because failure is a part of life. Perhaps the most important part 
as you cannot learn if you never fail. And because you learn from failure, you lose a lot less by failing than you might think. I've learned that sometimes, no matter how hard you try, some things just don't work out. But with hindsight, I don't regret that it was taken away from me, my sprinting, because in exchange, I've had the most incredible career as a musician, and music has become the most important thing in my life, taking me around the world several times. So back to what I said earlier about ambition, failure, and perseverance. By that I mean ambition is checked by failure which is overcome by perseverance. While in some, some areas of life we've made huge strides in increasing diversity and representation, the world of classical music has lagged behind. In the classical music industry, we have a real problem with diversity. Year after year, we see the same people becoming professional musicians from the same backgrounds and cultures. Yet in the UK, I think I can safely say we live in one of the most vibrantly rich and diverse countries in the world. What we don't see is that rich, wonderful diversity reflected on the stages, our audiences of the concert halls and opera houses. This is what I've been trying to change with the Chineke Foundation, to show that classical music belongs to people of all colors, ethnicities, and creeds, where musicians of color can walk on the stage and know that they belong. It doesn't have to be this way. We can change it, we are changing it, and we will change it. For those who still dismiss diversity as tokenistic, I'd like to remind you that diversity raises the bar. It doesn't lower the game. To be included and see yourself represented anywhere and everywhere is fundamental. Belonging is a basic human need. Everyone deserves that. Thank you, Chancellor. Thank you, University of Kent, and congratulations. I now resume the presentation of candidates from the Kent Business School. Daniel Ogolowu Wahan El Shade. Michelle Adaze Azika Jabeji. Zhenjiang Fang. Benicio Gino Fernandez. Ben Gary Forster. Gwendolyn Oturo Siribo Frimpong. La Marie Chantal Caitlin Good. Tarsin Lamashar Hak. Claudia Huff. Azaria Moses Howell. Well 
Sarah Hoxer. Afsar Hussain. Mohammed Abdur Rashid Issa. <laughs> Libby Njoke James. Kieran Michael Daniel Jones. Salamatu Kamara. Bintu Kieta. Billy Mwiti Kamathi. Olua Falahan Kaya. Dillian, uh, Dylan Rees Linkton uh, Thomas. Joanna Louis. Andre Benjamin Luke. Curtis Lewis Manning. Daniel Mumtaz. <laughs> Kyle Mutonadori. Victory at Afo Ogba. <laughs> Simisola Rachel <laughs> Olalebi. Congratulations. Ike Chikawuka Alexander Onumonu. Anthony uh, Chikala Enyina Osuji. Malcolm Franklin Oyenuga. Victor Piotr Pakan. Tani Juta Pangam. Catherine Jack Paris. Olutono Zainab Ayatunde Quadri. Paula Tandeka Ramok Gallo. Jaden Rahandwara. Angelo Brendan Sabaratnam. Georgina Rose Sewell. Rida Sidi. Jagpreet Singh. Javier Singh. Max Harvey Slavic. Zach Jake Callum Snelling. <laughs> Jahan Michael Standen. Nathan Abana Stephen. Romaldus Dikinskis. <laughs> Raiza Tabala. <laughs> A 
Adele Tenjawi. Diana Elena Velikiki. Dajushan Vijay Yakuma. Carmen Leah Wojcilescu. Matthew Raymond Sutherland Walsh. Brandon Wardle. Mahan Mohammed Talib Ye. Malena Destiny Zarume. For the degree of Master of Science. Precious Adiobong Achime. Nazrin Akhtar. Cardo Hoshaya Faris Algafuri. Aminat Liadi. Marvin Amo. Ijeoma Benita Baba Agba. El Hajj Abdul Bari. Roshanara Begum Bashir. KZ Chukwood Abello. Amareda Abdul Hamid El Rudani. Ibukanoloa Tope Elizabeth Famuyide. Arpit Kabula by Jane. Vinay Jane. Shrey Jamwal. Nagar Kakoda Poor. Jay Nilay Meta. Parisa Mir Zaya. Abdul Motin. Monisha Narasimha Murphy. Sharifa Taiwo Ojaniyi. Olamide Solomon Osungbade. Omalade Oyenyin. Rashif Pokakilath Rashid.
Finba Oladele Salako. Abiodun Moses Sani. Shishira Suvana. Bioden Gabenga Tamiola. Blessing Inia Tipi. Giano Robert West. Giano. Doreen Kuale Yeboa Abofo. For the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, Johnny Silius, with a thesis entitled Serial Entrepreneurship in Emerging Developing Countries, Evidence from Ghana. Now, will all those receiving degrees and certificates today please stand? As, as you can hear, this has been an occasion of great celebration of your achievements, and I wish the very best to each and every one of you. But throughout this ceremony, you have been roundly applauded by all those who are here to support you. So it's your turn now to reciprocate. Will you please applaud them in return? Well, that was quite good. Could you do it properly, please? Come on. That's better. That gets an A. Now, I know that some are continuing with further studies here, but both you and those leaving, please keep in touch with the university. You'll always be welcome to return, of course. We have one of the most extensive and lively alumni associations of any university in the United Kingdom, which I hope you'll join and please be active in it. Finally, may I thank every one of you for coming here today and wish you all a safe journey home. I declare this congregation closed. <laughs>